Belly fat is frustratingly hard to get rid of. Unfortunately, when you're losing body fat, there's nothing you can do to specifically target belly fat alone, but there is a method of exercise that's highly underutilized that can significantly help reduce it. In fact, when I used to look like this, it was the only change in exercise I made when I ended up looking like this. So today I'm going to show you what that exercise is and how to best use it to finally lose your belly fat. Now, first, before getting that, I want to explain why belly fat is so hard to get rid of. And honestly, it makes sense. Your belly fat is protecting vital organs. I want you to think of this container of rice as the amount of body fat you have. The first rice that goes to the bottom of the container, you're not going to be able to remove that until everything on top comes off first. And this is why it's so important to document not just weight, but also taking pictures from all different sides because you never know where the fat's going to come from. And sometimes there's big changes happening in other areas like your back that you might not see otherwise. So the only way you're going to lose belly fat is by going into a calorie deficit, which means you're burning more calories than you consume and then doing it long enough to start seeing progress in your belly. Now this video is about exercise, but of course you can't just change your exercise routine and expect to see great progress without making significant changes to your diet. But I have videos that cover that. I'll put one in the description you can check out after this. But just because increasing your activity helps doesn't mean the more intense your activity is, the better off you're going to be. Yes, things like high intensity interval training will burn more calories in a shorter period of time, but I'm telling you this doesn't end well for most people. It just runs you into the ground, it's hard to recover from, and you also have to factor in sustainability. You can't just do something to lose fat and expect to keep it off forever if you're not going to keep up with it long term. Now, this doesn't mean you won't be able to reduce your activity once you've reached your goal. You can back off some, but you always have to stay active. I'm 45 years old now, and even when I was younger, I tried to do these things. And sure, I was able to create some nice results, but I was never able to keep it because it was just not sustainable. I felt like crap. Of course, if you like it and can sustain it, great, but as someone who's worked with hundreds of people, I've just noticed that it doesn't tend to work well for many, and there's a better form of exercise to use. And if you've been following me for a while, you probably think I'm going to talk about strength training. I was certainly doing that before. It's highly recommended. It's one of the best things you can do. And especially if you want a more shredded look like this, you're going to have to have some form of strength training or it's not going to happen. But the change in exercise I made and what I recommend the most is walking. And you may be surprised to hear that, but don't believe people who say it's not intense enough. It's the single best exercise you can utilize to lose body fat. And I'm going to show you why this is the case, how much walking you should do, and some ways to easily increase your steps even without taking more additional time out of your day. So there's a few reasons why walking is so beneficial, and it's basically the opposite of hip. It's easy to do. You're not going to blast yourself into oblivion, which makes it easier to sustain. There's many different ways to easily get your steps in. And your body preferentially uses fat for fuel, so it's tapping right into fat stores. Now, as far as how many steps you should take, it really depends on where your starting point is. What I want you to do is look over the last few weeks see how many steps you've taken on average per week and that's basically your rough baseline if you don't know this don't make any changes for a couple weeks and see what it adds up to and don't feel like it's a bad thing if it's a lower amount even if you're only averaging maybe 2,000 steps a day it's actually good because it means you have more room to make increases and help with the fat loss process but just because walking is helpful doesn't mean you should go from zero to a hundred right away what I want you to do instead is increase your steps by about two to three thousand from whatever your current baseline is and then over time, as you hit plateaus, you can add in around 2,000 steps at a time. Another thing you can do to help with plateaus is you can either increase the intensity so you pick up the pace, or you can utilize a treadmill that can be set at an incline, and you can slowly increase the incline and speed over time as well. Also, don't get caught up in feeling like you have to hit the same amount of steps every single day. What I want you to do instead is take an average for the week. So if your goal is 7,000 steps, maybe one day you're going to do 4,000, the other day you're going to do 10,000, then 6,000, and 8,000. And over the week, you just want to get that average to work out. Now, as far as strategies to help get the steps up, time is the biggest issue. And of course, just regular walking is going to help tremendously, but you can also make some other alterations in your life to help. So maybe you park further away in the parking lot. Maybe you take the stairs instead of the elevator. The strategy I like to use if you have a sedentary job like me is set a timer for every hour. Once that goes off, just walk around for two or three minutes. It's going to help you stay loose and it'll probably add up more than you think. But even with all that being said, there's actually strategies you can take to increase your steps and it won't even take a single extra minute out of your day. For instance, if you find yourself on the phone, especially if you do this frequently in your job, walk around while you're talking on the phone, you're still being productive, but now you're getting steps in. The strategy I like to use is my kid plays soccer, we're going to his games, and there's a lot of downtime. We're there before the game. There's water breaks, there's a halftime. If I get up and move around during these breaks, it adds up pretty quickly. I do a lot of grilling in my backyard and normally I'd just be sitting there. Why not get up, I walk around my pool, I play with the dog, get some steps in, and that can add up 
up as well. So basically, look at your life, and if you're really honest about things, I bet there's a lot of opportunities where you're normally sitting, but you could be up moving around. And that way you're not finding yourself going for constant walks, you're already getting it done. Like I said, exercise alone is not gonna be enough to get you where you wanna be. So you need to know how much you should eat, how to make adjustments when you get started through plateaus. And I had that all covered. You can check that out next in this video right here. And if you put that together with this video, you're gonna be on your way to losing that belly fat.